Hello, viewers. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Lalit Mittal from Giggles Clinic and my own space. So today we'll be discussing another important uh, topic that is uh, association between heavy metals in autism. And we will study actually is there is a link between autism and heavy metals and what does the evidence say. Because this video I have purposefully prepared because there is a lot of uh, parents who come with uh, testing on heavy metals and they really get worried that uh, what are the consequences of these heavy metals in our kids and how seriously it is affected in uh, autism and uh, worsening the severity of autism. So this video is all about association between heavy metals and autism and is there really an association between the two. See heavy metals we all know they are uh, lead, mercury, cadmium and uh, aluminium and these all heavy metals do are responsible for causing developmental delays, learning disabilities, behavioral abnormalities but does that mean are they really associated with autism? Now there is a lot of research which has been done over uh, <coughs> heavy metal poisoning and autism and all the research which has done even the Cochrane review which has been done in 2015 which clearly says that there is no association between heavy metals and autism. There are a lot of parents and uh, there are various labs where they have shown that uh, parents are going for heavy metal testings for hair metal analysis. Now for this purpose I want to make it clear to every parent and to every uh, other person or caregiver who is dealing with children in special needs that hair metal testing is not at all correlated with actual blood levels of heavy metals because you know uh, hair exposure is only a part of the you know uh, uh, environmental exposure there may be environmental exposure because these heavy metals are present in environment they are present in water they are present in soils and even in case of various other cosmetic materials which we are using so actually uh, we don't know how much exposure of our hairs is there to the environment to the soil to the water what kinds of uh, you know uh, cosmetics we are using so exactly the level of these heavy metals which can we cannot predict in our body this only gives you a this only gives you a rough or you can say does not give you actually a clear idea of the heavy metals which are present in the body or in the blood and also a lot of studies have done and uh, the recent review of Cochrane which was done in 2015 and in 2009 also which has clearly demonstrated that heavy metal poisoning or metal analysis, hair metal analysis is not at all associated with autism or the severity of autism. Now let it make the statement other way around. Then why it is so that many kids with autism who are on the spectrum autism have been found to be levels of some uh, metals higher, especially those of lead. Now the reason is why we, we, we all know that uh, autistic kids, they do have a lot of oromotor sensory issues. That is they do have mouthing issues, they have history of pica, that is tasting and eating non-edible things like paint, toys or you know, uh, uh, or uh, cosmetic products like you know, colors or even hair colors or lipsticks. So as a, and all these products, they contain high amounts of lead, even the paints are there, even the pastry, even the you know lipsticks which you are using the cosmetic materials or various other products like toys the crayons watercolors all of them mostly contain some amount of lead so as a result of these the levels of lead have found to be higher in autistic kids not because it is uh, related to autism but because of the mouthing issues so uh, let it be clear to everybody that high levels of lead has been found to be have been found to be high in autistic kids but it does it does not mean that they have been associated with a severity of autism, it clearly demonstrates that autistic kids, because of mouthing issues, there is a history of pica, and as a result of which, they are more being exposed to lead in the bodies. But again, is that levels is that level of lead severe enough to cause behavioral changes, mental retardation, or you know sensory issues or other learning disabilities? Now for this also many of the parents and I've seen a lot of uh, parents who are going for hair metal analysis for lead and the levels of lead in hair metals have found to be very very high and as a result of this parents are very worried so what we have to do the levels are very very high and when I have told them to go for the blood level test the blood levels of lead had found to be absolutely normal as such as per the guidelines there is no clear safe levels of lead in the body but to be on the safer side the levels of lead have to be lower than 10 micrograms per deciliter 
and when we have gone when we have made these children to go for blood level testing of lead the levels of lead were found to be well below uh, 10 in three of my patients they were found one in the range of 5 one was in the 7. Point, uh, 6.5 and other was 2 and whereas the metal analysis were showing the levels of lead to be very very high the purpose why i am focusing on this is because hair metal analysis does not give you a clear picture and we cannot correlate the levels of hair metals with that of severity of the levels of heavy metals in the blood that is why testing for heavy metals is very very important and another thing is that very rarely i have found uh, kids who are having high levels of lead more than 10 microgram per deciliter so most of the kids which i have done the levels of well below the 10 so the thing is that we have to prevent the exposure of lead to our kids and the exposure of household lead is the most worrisome for our kids so the best thing what we can do we can avoid uh, lead paints in our house we can avoid using lead crayons we can avoid the exposure of toys to the kids we can use better quality of kids and lead are also present in pipes we can avoid that because our uh, children they have lot of mouthing issues we can work on the oral sensory issues so that their mouthing issues pica is p they can resolve plus we can look into the causes of iron deficiency iron deficiency can also cause mouthing issues so uh, that is history of pica so these are the things which we have to work upon we have to work mainly on the strategy of prevention the household exposure of lead rather than going for the treatment now many of the parents they are going for dmsa therapies they are going for chelation therapies they have no role they have not found to be any of beneficial effect in fact their harmful effects are much much more than that of uh, beneficial effects they have been found to be associated with a kidney disorder they have been found to kidney injuries and uh, even uh, lung issues and various other infections so as a result of this it's my uh, advice from my point of view that uh, we should not go for uh, these chelation therapies plus we should not get worried or get so much scared about the metal analysis if we are doing in here because here metal analysis does not give us a clear picture it does not give even a screening picture we should go if we are worried actually we should go for the blood levels of a particular analysis and as per the guidelines international society or international committee on lead poisoning for prevention in children they have clearly mentioned that uh, the levels of lead of more than 10 micrograms in deciliter in children are considered to be uh, you know uh, on the higher side they won't considered to be toxic but they are not considered to be on the safer side the levels have to be less than 10 micrograms per deciliter in the blood plus household prevention of lead we should prevent the exposure of children from them that is uh, which i have told a uh, prevention of exposure of uh, lead, uh, uh, paints walls we should reduce the mouthing issues we have to work on iron deficiencies so this was a small video to highlight the importance of uh, heavy metals and chelation and what is the latest evidence about their association with autism thank you